All right, guys. So we are back. And today we're talking about the settlement house movement. This is something taking place within the context of the progressive era. And I love this because it's such a novel and interesting way to do charity work and, and just meet so many different needs. Uh, these people have a building and some volunteers and they just lean into it. So we're going to take a look at what they did and, and who they were able to help. What we'll see is that the immigrant communities, uh, immigrants often faced high poverty, a lot of discrimination. Uh, they're going to face a lot of challenges and obstacles in getting established, in, in getting a foothold in the United States. And so they will settle in what we kind of consider these ethnic enclaves. Uh, think Little Italy or Chinatown, Little Korea, uh, in all of these different ethnic enclaves where people are gathering. Uh, the enclaves provide some familiarity, but it also slows assimilation. I've got a, a video on the new immigrant and, and that immigration from that period uh, for those of you who are interested. Uh, but what we'll see is that in this time, a, a woman by the name of Jane Adams uh, out of Chicago is going to open up a settlement house called the Hull House. This is probably the most famous and one of the earliest uh, settlement houses. And what she does is she wants to meet the needs of the immigrant community in which this house uh, in that neighborhood, right? So uh, the settlement houses act as kind of a community center uh, for the immigrant communities. Uh, immigrants in that area, can anybody really, could go and it, it's a way to help combat poverty and allow them to have direct aid, right? Helping the people that need it the most right where they are. Uh, very little red tape, very little uh, obstacles or hurdles that they have to overcome. They just come and, and get help with the services that are provided. So what is it that they provide? Well, uh, oftentimes they would have volunteers come in and teach English lessons because that was something that was very needed in the, the immigrant community. If they were going to function as American citizens, if they were going to be able to communicate with anybody who isn't from where they're from, they need to be able to learn English. Uh, children may learn it at school if they're going to school. Uh, if they're not going to school, then this gives the children and adults alike an opportunity to come and learn. Uh, there may be uh, food assistance. Right. Think of uh, not necessarily soup kitchens, but an opportunity to come and exchange recipes and and get some of the basics, the necessities, uh, dried goods. Uh, they also gave out material assistance. The volunteers uh, would would have these huge collection drives and uh, they would especially focus on kind of middle class families whose kids have maybe outgrown their clothes and time to pass those on. Uh, they would collect those and then give those out to the immigrant community uh, that really did them a great service uh, for them to be able to get uh, just a few things that they don't have to purchase and that they can provide for their children. Uh, there might also be volunteers who were attorneys uh, that could provide some legal aid. Immigrants often found it very difficult to navigate uh, government or the legal system. And so if they had need of that uh, with language barriers and with kind of a fear of government or discrimination, then they could come and, and they could feel more comfortable getting aid in these places. Uh, they also would sometimes offer job assistance or uh, have kind of a, a medical or dental clinic, uh, do some basic checkups and, and that sort of thing. And they could serve as just a meeting space, a gathering place. If you're living in a tenement house building, there's not a lot of common area. There's not a place for you to gather. And so this served as a way where they could come and have big public gatherings. They could have common meals. They would use these as a, as a place to celebrate maybe larger holidays with the extended community. So they really served a lot of needs. If there was a way that they could use this space to meet a need of the community, they tried to do that. Uh, this is kind of a turnkey deal. I love this. This is such a fascinating uh, way to do charity, and, and we're still modeling some of that. Now, settlement houses are often staffed by upper and middle class volunteers because they have the time to do it. And in fact, more often than not, it was women who were volunteering. Their husbands are at work all day. And so the women could come if they wanted to volunteer and donate their time and work during the day. Uh, uh, so really a lot of opportunity. And we see once again, the importance and the impact that women have in the progressive era uh, in not just creating social change, but reaching out uh, and giving direct help. Now, the settlement house has become the center of neighborhood life in a lot of these ethnic enclaves. They become invaluable for the immigrants that they serve uh, and really, again, allow them to get that foothold in this country, uh, feel comfortable, feel a sense of uh, community and family. 
So really important uh, things that are going on. And we see this in conjunction with all the other social change that's taking place is maybe this recognition that uh, immigrants are, are going to be valuable. They're going to contribute to society. They're people. And we want to make sure that we value that. So I love seeing some of those things uh, creep in here. Guys, I hope you liked the video. By the way, you can still go and visit the Hull House today. Uh, it's a museum to the Settlement House uh, movement. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you learned something. Please go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and leave me any comments that you may want me to know. Uh, I'll try to get back with everybody that does. Uh, in the meantime, guys, thank you for watching.